I'm here from your Guitar Academy and welcome back to our acoustic month that we're having here on the channel. Uh, and this week for our weekly challenge we're going to be delving in to the magical world of open chords. Alright and for those of you who've never used open tunings before or are relatively new to them, uh, like myself, uh, an open tuning is where you take the open strings of the guitar and would tune them so that they would end up being strummed openly with no fingers on the fretboard uh, as an open chord and you know you, you could tune it to sort of you know open C, open D, G, whatever you know depends on how much you want to detune the strings uh, but for this example we're going to do one of the easier ones to tune your guitar into which is going to be a dadgad which gives you a, a D sus4 chord. So the tuning that we've got for dadgad is like in the name we've got D A D the dad bit so we're only changing one here one string here the low E string and then we've got G A D the gad bit uh, where we're changing the two high strings to, to A and D. Um, and so for getting started on tuning this, we're going to want to tune the first low E string down. And, you know, if you want to do some ear training practice here and you don't have a tuner handy, we can just pick that D string and then we put the low E string at the same time. And then we can sort of pick them at the same time. And then you just tune that E string down until you hear them sort of mellow out together and you sort of lose any of that dissonance where it's slightly out, you know, like there. You hear that nice plateau. And so we're going to do that for the D. Now we've got D, A, D. So we've got the dad part. Um, and we're going to use also the same D to get that D on the high E string. You could use the lower one if you want, but it's a bit closer uh, in pitch. We're going to use that middle D again. So we're going to tune them again. And just tune that one down. And now what we need to do is change that B string here uh, to uh, the A. So and luckily we've got the A string right here. So we're going to play that A string. And then we're going to play the, D, uh, the B string. I'm going to tune that one down until we hear that again, sort of octave plateau. And now if I strum all the open strings, we've got a really nice open sounding chord there. That would be, when we strum it openly, is a D sus4. All right, so now that I've tricked you into tuning your guitar into dadgad, you're probably regretting it and thinking, why have I done this? Why have I tuned my guitar uh, into this? I'm, I don't know how to play any chords anymore. Um, and I don't know how to play the guitar anymore. Uh, well, luckily, you know, there's quite a few positives to doing this. You don't actually have to really use open, like, bar chords anymore. Well, of course, we can be using open chords. That's the whole point of it. Uh, but bar chords are sort of non-existent now. You can use them because since we've got it in the sus chord, you can sort of use your one finger to bar all the strings, and that's, that's as hard as a bar chord gets, you know, just point your finger across all the strings and strum it and you've got a nice open uh, sus chord there. Uh, really easy to do. Uh, but that's kind of, you know, that's something you can do but you don't really need to do that. Another really sort of positive that I've found of using Dadgad is since we've got D, A, D, A, D, only one string is not D or A, it means that we have a lot of symmetry on the neck. So, you know, if I was playing a little riff um, and I came up with it on the low E string, well, low D string now, you know, and on the A string, I can play that sort of all between these different octaves and give a really cool sound to it, you know. I don't have to worry about, you know, visualizing any too many shapes. I can just think, okay, I played it on this D. I can play it on this D. The same goes for that A. You know, just using those third and fifth fret. And I can make some really cool sounding uh, sort of, you know, westerny, uh, maybe Celtic sounding um, kind of tunes going on there. And then if you wanted to do it in a different key, um, you would just change, you'd get a capo. Um, and that way you could sort of change it. So rather than having D sus4, you put a capo on two, you're now in a E sus4. All right, so now that we've gone through the possible applications of using dadgad, and why you might want to, or if, if you didn't like the sound of any of them and you never want to use dadgad again, uh, that's fine too. <laughs> but bear with me, it gets better. Uh, because now we're going to have a look at sort of using the alternatives to bar chords. And if you've ever put your guitar in drop D, if you've played electric or even acoustic, you put your guitar in drop D, uh, these shapes might look quite familiar to you. So we're going to be having that sort of across the lower three strings there. We're going to have it on this. We're going to be doing the third fret for this one. We're going to have third fret E string, third fret 
A string and third fret D string. I'm going to use our second, third and fourth fingers for this one because we want to keep this first finger here. We want to keep that free if we're going to add the major or minor third to give you some tonality uh, to the chord that we're going to be doing. So there you have a little good look at that. Um, there, so second finger, third fret, third finger, third fret on the A string and then fourth finger, third fret on the D string there. And so then we've got our sort of power chord shape there if we're in a drop D chord. And now we're going to go add and add that sort of major third in on the second fret of the G string, adding in the A there, that's the third of F. So we've got ourselves an F major chord here. And like we've been doing with the finger style course, we're just going to try and finger pick this one with our thumb, second finger, third finger, and then third finger. Thinking of piano there, uh, we've got thumb, first finger, second finger, third finger on our picking hand. Um, and there we go. So that is how to play your first major chord in a dad gad tuning. And all you need to do to make that a minor chord now is we're going to take that first finger and we're going to just move it down a fret. And this is a much more of a nasty chord because my hand looks kind of contorted there. But you've got that minor third there now. And you know, that's really it. That is your major and your minor chords that you'll be using for when you're playing in dad gad. And you can move these just around the neck just like that. And you can keep those sort of higher strings open for when you're playing. As I was saying earlier, having that guitar tuned to an open chord, we can be really lax with sort of muting of the strings um, when we're playing in the, the D key. So have a little go at that. So practice just, you know, getting that major shape there and just practice maybe just moving it up. And see sort of some of your favorite shapes to play that with those open strings there. And you don't have to, you can just pick those three strings if you don't want that open sound. And then try again with that minor one. But if that's too much, you can just leave the G string open uh, where you might play a minor chord. And you know, if you're playing those major ones, you don't need to be too careful with it as the open strings give a nice op like, open sound, like the name of the tuning, um, a good open sound to everything you're playing. Um, so yeah, give it all a go and see where you get with those. It's also worth remembering that all sort of chord diagrams and tabs for this will be on the website for you to have a look. If you didn't quite catch the shape I was using there um, on my hand, you can click on the link in the description to the website and you'll be able to find sort of all the chord shapes there uh, to guide you through this. Um, so what I've got next now is going to be a little chord progression that I've come up with uh, for you guys to all play along to if you've sort of, you know, been struggling to come up with your own. Um, and there's a few different levels that you can use for this. You can keep with those sort of adding that major third in there, or you can just keep that G string open and play the open chords. That sound absolutely delightful. Um, so the chord progression I've got here is sort of like a little G Lydian, uh, which is in the key of, well, sort of the home key of D is the fourth mode of that. Um, so we can use, you know, all these open strings sort of freely. So we've got fifth fret, on the sort of power chord, and then we've got fourth fret on that G string there, which gives us a G major chord. So we're gonna strum that just once, all there. We're gonna move that exact shape just up two frets. So we've got seven, 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 six. Strum that once again. And now we've got, this one's gonna be a tricky one. We've got our first minor chord here. And this one's gonna be nine, 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 seven. Going from the lower string to the higher string. And if this one's a bit too much, just take that finger off that G string, play it nice and open there. So let's have a little run through of those first three chords. And the last little reminder there, we're gonna be playing that third chord, strumming it twice. Like that. All right, so I'm gonna be doing the, the major chords. Uh, with the thirds, but I might switch out the other one if I feel it's a bit of a stretch. So let's have a little playthrough. So we've got first chord, G, A, B minor, B minor. Lovely, nice stuff. All right, so we've got those ones there, and then we're going to go all the way up to our 12th right now. And we're going to keep, again, keeping that same shape. We've got 12, 12, 12 in the major. And we've got that 11 to give that major third there. So 12 on the E, 12 on the A, 12 on the D, and then 11 on the G string. It's from that one, and that's a really nice sounding one, I think, you get those open strings where we've got the higher ones there. So it sounds quite harpy. So we're gonna do that one twice as well. And then we've got a nice easy one going down here to an E minor chord. 
where you just have two, 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 and the rest is open. And then the last one we've got, which is probably the trickiest one of the progression, is we're gonna move up again two frets. And this one we're gonna have the minor chord, we're gonna have four, 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 two. And we'll strum that one just the once. So let's try that second half now. So we've got up on the 12th fret, strumming it twice, D major, D major, D major, E minor. And then we've got ourselves F sharp minor again, taking that open G if we need to. And then we're back where we started on the G major chord. That one. So let's have a little play through that whole chord sequence um, and see how we get along. So I'll do it really nice and slowly. I'll give you a little count along. So one, two, Three, four, D. Not D. <laughs> that's not D, that's G. We got G. Three, four, A. B minor. Open. B minor. D major. D major. E minor. F sharp minor. So a bit more up to speed. And this strum, we're going to add some finger picking in to keep with the finger style feel of this. So a little bit faster, we might have. And then we're back around. So I've done a few little pushes there. You can experiment with the rhythm as you see fit um, and have a little go with that. So let's have a look at adding in a bit of a finger picking, picking pattern. Um, to really highlight those open strings that we're going to be using. So I'm going to be using just the open, completely open chords here. I'm not going to be using the sort of the third on the major there because I like the sound of the open ones. And this is going to be a quite a simple uh, starting picking pattern for us to use. So I make it as simple as possible. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get our thumb. That's going to be doing the sort of low string. It's going to be the same picking pattern for each chord. So we've got thumb on the E string. And then we're going to have second finger, third finger, fourth finger on the D string, G string, and what would now be A string, but it's B string. And we're just going to do that nice and slowly there. We do that one more time. You know, and if you want to, you can change this up for how you feel a bit more comfortable. You can just do, pick them all at the same time. You just pick everything. And then lastly, we're gonna pick that low string again. I'm gonna pick the two high strings there. Yeah, we're gonna be making a nice use of the sort of drone that we'll get from picking these two for each chord. So all together for our picking pattern, we've got one, two, three, four, and one. It's not correct, but it's a nice rhythm to, uh, I think, to remember it by just one, two, three, four, and one. One, two, three, four, and one. And we'll just move that up and down, all those chords that we've done. So let's have a little, go through that chord sequence really slowly using uh, that picking pattern. So I'm gonna start off on the G we've got. So here we go. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Twice on this one. Up to the D. You could even do this one open if you wanted. So we're just doing the 12th fret. Second fret now. And then lastly, fourth fret. That's a nice tense one to lead us back to the first chord. Back to home there. So there you go. So that's sort of the first level of finger picking that we're going to have a look at. I've got one other one if you fancy just have, if you get on really well with that one, fancy having a little bit of a trickier practice, you know, really get those fingers moving. All right, so I'm gonna quickly go through this next picking pattern that we've got. Might even do a little bit of tapping. We're gonna be getting into that more next week, but a little tease of it, this one. Also, my fingers feel very sore uh, from this. I don't know if you can see, uh, but I don't play much acoustic. And if you don't either, your fingers might be feeling a bit sore if you used to playing on the electric guitar string. So make sure to take little breaks, let your fingers recover um, while you're doing this. All right, so let's have a little look. So we've got, just that we're going to actually start the same way as with the previous picking pattern, which makes it nice and easy, but we're going to add a little extra bit in here. So the first bit, same. And then I do a little tap there, just hitting my strings there. 
I'm trying to get my fingers in position. So I've got my thumb there ready on that low string. This one here ready on the D string. First finger on the D string ready. And then, so then any finger that I want on that high string. Because uh, that's the, the strings that we're going to be playing. So let's have a little look. So that's what we've got there for the first one. Let's have a little look at that again. So tap, D string, E string, high E string. All right. I'm using my sort of third finger to catch that high E string there. And so all together. Nice like that. And so we'll go through again. We're going to be using the same picking pattern for the whole progression here. Just remembering on which chords we do it twice on. So here we go. But we just do it the once. We do it all once on each chord. Here we go. And that is the sort of slightly more advanced picking pattern that we've got there. Um, and again, you, you can, if you want to do it sort of double time, you can stay on each chord twice and then do the ones we've done it four times if you fancy doing it. And as always, if you know you, you didn't quite catch that and you wanted to have some tabs to be able to understand it a bit better, check the link in the description and it'll have all the sort of tabs and chord boxes there that we're using for this lesson. And there we have it. That is sort of our little introduction to Dadgad. Well, it certainly could have been played in a standard tuning. I don't believe it would have sounded the same. Having that, you know, those nice open sounding chords, just delightful. Um, you wouldn't really capture that within standard tuning. You'd have, you know, same open strings. There's still the same interval between them. But if it was when playing in DadCAD, you can be really sort of lax with your playing and you can sort of hit any note really on the fretboard and it's going to sound good. You can be really clumsy with it. Um, you know, if you just hit any strings, you know, you fluff, fluff one, add them in. It generally sounds really good. And I, I really enjoy it. So I think when I'll be playing acoustic, I'll definitely be uh, using some more of these tunings. Let me know how you've been getting on with this. Hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. Um, and if you've decided to give it a go, come with your own please. Uh, please? Own oh, peace. Uh, be sure to share it. I'd love to see what you guys have come up with using this tuning, um, if you've inspired, or even just the piece that we uh, learned today. Uh, so I'll just play through that one more time for you. A little recap on what it might sound like. I'm going to do it at the more basic level um, and then we'll finish the lesson. So all the best guys. And here's the last little piece that we were learning. Mm -hmm.